everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Sean. And we watched a movie. We sure did. So there is a new release on Netflix you may have heard of. It's called Cuties. Uh, it is about an 11 year old girl named Amy. She is a Senegalese immigrant who is living in Paris now with her family. And um, she desperately wants to get in with the cool kids at school. Who doesn't? Who are not quite like her. <laughs> no. So, yes, it is a universal tale, let's just say, of a little girl who just wants to fit in. Yep. She is living right now in an apartment with her very conservative mother, a pretty strict auntie, and some little siblings she cares for, she helps take care of. Um, the girls at school have sort of a different life, she suspects, than her own, a less conservative life. Um, they wear clothes that uh, her Amy's modest parents would not let her wear, not in a million years. Uh, they dance in a dance troupe called The Cuties. <laughs> yeah, it's a good name, obviously. Yeah, obviously. It's a really great name. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's just something alluring and beautiful and wonderful about about the kids that you think are cool because they're so mysterious to you and so she's trying yeah. to find a way in our Amy. Um, uh, Amy wonderfully played I have to say for an 11 year old girl to put like she's got the whole movie on her shoulders Fatia Yusuf. Uh, fantastic fantastic fantastic. Yeah absolutely. Um, the movie by a first-time female director, her name is Maimuna Ducure, herself, uh, I believe, a Senegalese immigrant. Um, you know, she's, she's put her heart into this, and uh, it is an independent French film that had a <clears throat> short run at Sundance, and then, of course, not much else since we've had Corona. There hasn't been anything And else, then it yeah. appeared on Netflix where I'm sure it would have got a modest little audience because it is a very good film. Um, except for some controversy. Oh, so much controversy. <laughs> some controversy that's been stirred up on its behalf. Um, so some people were very upset um, because this film shows the cuties dancing quite provocatively. Yeah, absolutely they do. As provocatively as you've seen in any rap video. Yeah. Um, so people were calling on a boycott of the film. They were can calling on... Uh, cancel Netflix. Cancel Netflix, yes. Hashtag cancel Netflix. They were calling on Netflix to just take it down entirely. Netflix did change its marketing for the film. They had a picture of the girls in their scantil, scantily clad little, I don't know, costumes or whatever you want to call their dance attire. Uh, so they did change it up uh, from that, which is fine by me. Yeah. I, I mean, that's not the point. That's not the, the selling point. That shouldn't be the selling point <laughs> of this movie. No. Um, you know, it's tough because I can think of uh, a bunch of reality shows and a dozen other movies that show kids doing this yeah. same thing, which that does not been, make it right. No, does but they've not been ignored. Make it right, yeah. But have it has been ignored. Yeah, but this is suddenly a flashpoint because mm -hmm. political require political needs require it in the U.S. to distract from everything else that's going on, and let's rally the base. Mm -hmm. But how horrible this is. Let's seize on this particular movie because, hey, it just came out. It has the unfortunate timing of coming out two yeah, months before the election. who is um, protesting this? It is a lot of uh, white American moms with good Christian values. And the little girl in this movie is not white or Christian. So let's not pretend that, like, Little Miss Sunshine, who had a little girl doing a full-on strip tease, but she's white, so that one went under the radar. This one happens to star and be made by women and girls of color. Hmm, is that a coincidence? 
Anyway. <laughs> um, most of the people who are protesting this movie have not seen this movie, which is so often the case. Yeah. Uh, the thing about this movie, and I 1000% believe that this movie is actually in agreement with these people, yes. that the sexualization of young girls is a bad thing. Absolutely. Um, That's clear. Yes. Does it use young actresses in compromising positions to show that? Yes, it does. Does the camera linger on a lot of like simulated sex acts that we call dancing this day and age? Yes, it does. Does it make us feel deeply, deeply uncomfortable? It better. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. It should. It's meant to. Certainly the camera pans to the audience who are often, a lot of them are reacting the same way we're feeling with disgust on their faces. So uh, the filmmaker agrees with us that these are disturbing images. Uh, I think why she's presenting them is because she's trying to remind parents where, where did this come from? Did they just invent it? No, they found it on YouTube. Yeah, this, this is not a new thing. No, of course not. This has been around <laughs> since I was an 11-year-old. Oh, boy. I'm In not dark saying ages. something. Yeah. Before, Before the internet. Before the internet. Mm -hmm. But that, well, then it was MTV. Yeah. We all know who it was back then. It was MTV. That's right. It was those goddamn music videos. <laughs> yes. And now it's something else that's it, corrupting their It was their video children. games for a while. Yes. Well, it's easier to point the finger at those influences than saying something with our parenting or our culture needs to change. And I think uh, it is uh, a bit of a beacon to parents. I think the filmmaker is saying 11 is too young to have a cell phone. 11 mm -hmm. is too young to be on the internet unsupervised yep. because it's not just about where they learn the dance moves. They definitely learn them from the internet. Um, it's deaf. <laughs> There's other things in the movie that are also red flags about yeah. letting your little children get on that internet by themselves. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I think culturally, you know, we are all part of this problem that has promoted this. Somehow, this is the new normal. And we shouldn't be okay with that. And a lot of us are not okay with that. But how do we actually make change? It's not canceling Netflix, guys. Yeah. Netflix is not the problem. And Netflix may be the root of many other problems, sure. First of all, it didn't make this film. Just so you know, this is not a Netflix original film. Uh, they're just the platform for it. Are they giving access to uh, pedophiles? Are they making it easier for pedophiles to look at little girls? Maybe, uh, but pedophiles don't need a Netflix subscription. They can get it free at the park. They certainly can get it free on TikTok where your little daughters are doing these things all of the time. And do you know about it? That's what this movie is about. And, and I think as part of a larger conversation, I hope it's also about what is wrong with our culture, that this is where we have trended towards. Yeah. Because um, for one reason or another, uh, girls' bodies are maturing at a younger age, uh, whether that's... It's the B hormones. It very well may be, Sean. <laughs> but we also could take good prenatal care. That's true. Kids of better nutrition. There's stuff in the milk and the meat products. It's all a problem. Um, but the fact remains that girls' bodies are maturing earlier, earlier than they are prepared for. Uh, this attracts the attention of older boys and apparently men. Uh, so instead of shaming the girls who, let's be clear, in this movie it is very clear, their bodies are their only currency. Certainly Amy feels that way, that this is the only, they, her family is strapped for cash, her father is away procuring a second bride. So there's some money for that. Um, but she has no money, she has nothing new, nothing good for herself, and her body is her only currency. And so, yikes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's scary. It is scary. It is. Mm -hmm. That's, that is the point, as you said, that's what the filmmaker is trying to remind us of, mm -hmm. and that's the message here. Yeah. And this is not this, the, 
the root of the problem. This is a mirror that's being held up mm -hmm. to what's already there. Yeah. And I think it is particularly problematic for black and brown bodies who uh, girls and boys have been, um, I don't want to say confused, but they have definitely, people often attribute them as much older that's than true. they actually yeah. are. That is a so, absolutely societal thing. Mm -hmm. So that uh, remembering who Amy is, a little girl of color, um, this is a this is a problem. Yeah. This is a big problem. Um, so, is it fair for the filmmakers to have asked these children to act in these ways to prove a point? You know, that's honestly a conversation that is worth having. Absolutely. I think. Um, Sarah Pauly, who is a Canadian, she was a child actress here in a beloved family, wholesome viewing TV show, was in the news this week because she said when she was like 12 or 13, she was kissing men twice her age on the set of this show. And just looking back, you realize how problematic and uncomfortable that is. Yeah. And we hear all the time from child stars who you know, have done some things that were damaging to them. For sure. So personally, I wonder all the time whether children should act, period. Um, and I think it's definitely worth having that conversation. I know things are better on sets than they were before. Parents are going to be there. They have proxies. But Still. some parents are in it for the money. Some parents are letting things happen that should not. You can yeah. watch Honey Boy if you want to look more into that. Yes. Um, but this is these are real problems, and it's okay to talk about it. But I don't think we want to muzzle Netflix or cancel a movie no. that is trying to be part of the conversation. I think, well, I think censorship is frankly often a problem, always a problem sure perhaps. Yeah. And it scares me a little bit when that's people's first response because I think what this movie is trying to provoke and I think what the more important issue is, is that we talk about these things um, and be real and honest about what the actual problems are because the problem is not really a movie. It would be great if we made changes oh, to our yeah. society where the next time somebody wrote a movie about an 11 year old girl named Amy, you know, she played soccer. Hmm. And Let's hope, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> these stories exist because they exist in the world. And if we want to do anything about it, if we want to move that needle at all, then we're going to have to be real about these things that make us very uncomfortable. Yeah, that's a pretty universal message. Mm -hmm. Really, it's not just limited to this one issue. Mm -hmm. So I actually think the film was quite beautiful. I think uh, Maimuna Dukure is a very talented director and I look forward to seeing more from her. I certainly think the young actresses did a, a wonderful job and I hope that they have been protected from some of this vitriol um, because this is what happens, you know, when when people decide to get crazy about an issue without really knowing all the facts and without actually wanting to discuss them. That's the thing. Is is if you are if you really have these beliefs, then we should be trying to make change in the industry if you really think it's an acting problem. But in our actual uh, homes, uh, raising strong daughters and well-behaved sons, and in our culture, why are we youth obsessed and sex obsessed? And why do these da dance competitions exist to do to reward this behavior? Because it's not being judged by an entire tan panel of pedophiles. Um, that's usually parents within the organization. So th this is where change needs to come from. If you put your kids in a beauty pageant, you know why? Yeah. Why is why is that? Why? Why is that? Um, so yeah, I think there are some big questions that we need to be asking ourselves and like Sean said, this is not new. 
these problems have existed for a really long time, whether it was beauty pageants 50 years ago or MTV 25 years ago, and now it's TikTok, well, you know, it's a lot of the same, and the thing that never changes is that we keep doing nothing about it. So yeah, don't watch the movie if you don't want to, that's fine. But if you're upset about it, let's maybe be a little more honest about why we're really upset. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. <laughs> this movie is not the issue. Mm -hmm. This movie we can talk about as part of a larger problem. Mm -hmm. But getting rid of this movie does nothing. It doesn't solve anything. It, no. The only thing it does is allow you to just put your head in the sand mm. and say, ha ha, we fixed it. Well, no, this is not going to be fixed plus or minus one movie. <laughs> no. And that's the thing about a, a bandwagon, right? It, it allows people to release their pent-up anger in this one area and it is often curated by people way higher up than we even know not caring about this issue perhaps wanting to detract from another issue yeah. but it's like a lightning rod and people pile on yeah that's that is also a problem in our culture yeah it is so thank you cuties for highlighting not just the problem you thought you were highlighting that's right but this other one as well. Yep. Thanks uh, so much for watching, everyone. Bye.